Alright, Sony a7S III versus Sony FX3, the differences. Because internally, these two cameras are exactly the same. At least since the firmware update 2.0 of the a7S III, which added the picture profile S Cinetone, that before was exclusive to the cinema line of Sony cameras. So video modes, frame rates, image quality are exactly the same with both these cameras. So how can you decide which camera is right for you? This video is going to help. First things first, price point. A7S III new goes for roughly 3500 US, FX3 roughly 3900. So it's about a $400 difference. Included with the FX3 is this combination of top handle and XLR module. Corresponding on the side of the A7S III is the XLR K3M adapter. With both modules, you're getting exactly the same functionalities. They hook up to the multi-interface hot shoe on the top of the camera, giving you a digital audio interface straight into it. And this quite simply explains the difference in price point. With the FX3, you're getting the XLR top handle. Let's talk about this XLR top handle for a moment. Firstly, it's made of plastic. A couple of years ago, I would have been very suspicious of that. But in recent times, the compound plastic materials have become so good that you don't have to worry about this thing bending, breaking, or not being rigid enough to be used as a grip. It features an on-off switch, so if you just want to use it as a top handle, but have no use for the actual XLR audio inputs, you can turn it off right here on the side. Then either record your audio externally with a field recorder or hook up a single 3.5mm mic to the camera input on the side. You can hook up two XLR microphones and one 3.5mm microphone. You can have each of the microphones level automatically or manually level it. For the XLR inputs, you have the option of a 10 and 20 decibel attenuator. You can select line, mic or mic plus 48 volts phantom power. For both XLR inputs, you got two options of low cut filters, 100 and 300 hertz. You can also link input 2 to input 1, so you set up input 1 and transfer all the settings to input 2. Right here you can select which inputs to use. So for all use cases where high quality straight to camera audio is important, because for example you have a short turnaround and need to speed up post production wherever possible, this XLR top handle combo is a very good idea. And the combination in and of itself is intelligently done. There are three quarter inch mounts on the grip, so we can hook up accessories like an external recorder or power bank to increase battery life. And since we're talking accessories and quarter inch mounts, there's actually some on the camera body itself. Three of them on top of the camera, two of which will be used to attach the XLR top handle. There's one on the right side and one on the left side. Though I am skeptical about the usability of the quarter inch mount on the left side. Because, at least as of now, I don't know of a single piece of rigging gear that wouldn't block the HDMI output below it. I guess Sony will do some proprietary rigging gear specifically made for the FX3 with which you can use that particular quarter inch mount and not block the HDMI output. Especially for filmmakers that almost exclusively work with external monitors, blocking the HDMI output is just a bad idea. Then here's a recommendation. As of yet, there is no solution for secure cable connections. Especially for run and gun type work, where you're moving a lot and moving fast, securing your cable connections, especially on a camera side of things, is important. Because if a cable breaks, that's usually not breaking the bank. But if a connector inside the camera takes damage and you cannot output a signal anymore, then you might be royally effed, actually breaking the bank. So, to conclude, although there's quarter inch mounts directly on the camera itself, anyone who's going to do some serious video work with the FX3 on a set, for example, will have to rely on a cage solution for rigging. As of now, the gear you would need to rig flawlessly using only the quarter inch mounts on the camera body itself isn't there. Good idea, but we have to see where this goes. What kind of gear will be realized and manufactured in the future that might be specific to the FX3 and then work really, really well. Until then, a cage, like you can see right here on my A7S III from Tilta, for example, is still a better solution. It's well thought out, versatile, has a metal construction, you can securely mount your gear and protect your connectors. Also, there's only one quarter inch mount per side of the camera, so whatever you hook up can still turn. In a perfect world, you always have two quarter inch mounts using two quarter inch screws to lock a part in place. Because then chances are it won't move until the end of the shoot. And should you want to hook up a matte box like this, you either need a cine lens with an internal zoom, 
so you don't have a protruding lens barrel that can't take the weight of a matte box, or you will have to rely on a 15mm rail mount system. So again, we're looking at more rigging. All the people that are working with a crew that needs to have access to the camera will have to use a cage and rig that thing. Now, if you're a single operator, if you're not working with a crew where different people have to add technology to your camera, of course, it's perfect because you can keep the setup light, versatile, and the couple of quarter inch mounts on the camera body itself allow you to add whatever you need at the moment while still maintaining a small form factor. So for that use case, a single operator, it's really well thought out. Moving on to another important and obvious difference between the two cameras, body design and button layout. With the FX3, the joystick or multi-selector resides on the top right of the camera. With the a7S III, it's on the back, like you're used to from other Sony ILCE cameras. With the FX3, we're getting two record buttons, a big one on the top right and a small one on the front. The on-off switch with the a7S III sits around the shutter button. With the FX3, instead of the on-off switch, we're getting a power zoom control. So you can control cine zooms like the 28 to 135 f4. The FX3 did away with the regular on-off switch around the shutter button. It has its on-off switch on the top left corner on the back side. The standard mode dial usually resides to the right of the EVF. With the FX3, we don't even have that mode dial. Its functionality being transferred to a mode button next to the on-off switch on the back. Something the FX3 completely did away with is the exposure compensation dial. No big deal for video shooters anyway. The standard configuration of the custom function buttons of the FX3 is dialed in for video from the get-go. Custom button number one, aperture. Custom button number two, white balance. Custom button number three, ISO. Custom button number four, steady shot. Custom button number five, focus magnification. Clicking up on the click wheel or D-pad, as it's also called, gives us the display toggle. Clicking left toggles zebras, clicking right toggles peaking, and clicking down gets us into shutter speed. On the other hand, it's no problem at all to configure a Sony a7S III in exactly the same way. Its buttons and dials are all heavily customizable. No video shooter will have problems figuring out the best way to set up the a7S III for video shooting. Another important difference with the FX3, we're getting tele lights. The record button itself is a tele light. We got a little tele light on the front and the big one on the back. So again, if you're working with a crew or you're doing something within broadcast, visual communication with people that are placed all over the set is important. In extreme low light situations, with close-ups especially, should the tele lights become a problem, you have the option to turn them off inside the camera menu. And now to wrap up this part of the video, both cameras show a red bar around the display once they're recording, which is more easily spotable than simply the red letters REC for record. Next up, EVF. Very important difference between the two cameras and a very obvious one. The FX3 does not have an EVF. On the other hand, the A7S III has a magnificent EVF. It's fantastic. It's basically the best EVF Sony ILCE cameras have to offer. Same one as in the A1, by the way. Now, whether you're going to miss an EVF totally depends on your workflow, on your style of shooting. Most video shooters I know work with external monitors anyway, so probably they're not going to sweat not having an EVF. From my experience, I can tell you I mostly do shoot with an external monitor. But when I'm scouting a location, and by scouting in this case, I mean we already know where we're going to shoot, but we have to find the shots within that location. I almost always use the EVF because it's easier for my brain to focus on the frame. I should say easier compared to looking at the monitor and having to, at least subconsciously, take in all the periphery. So for location scouting, I really like using an EVF, because it's easier for my brain to detect possible shots, what's wrong with a shot, or which shot is the best. With the FX3, I would have to use an external digital EVF to reproduce what I can do with the A7S III right out of the box. That for sure is something you have to take into consideration when deciding between these two cameras. In the end though, it's personal preference. Next important difference, active cooling. The FX3 has fans built into the camera body. The A7S III does not. So in extremely hot conditions, the FX3 will be the more reliable camera and most likely run much longer than the A7S III. Now, is it important to you? Well, it depends, as I said, whether you're working in extremely hot conditions. With my A7S III, for example, I did a three-day live seminar streaming between seven and 10 hours a day, and the thing didn't overheat. It did get rather warm to the touch, 
but it still kept performing like a champ. So I'd say this, if you're not working in the Sahara Desert or near the equator, having to rely on very long continuous shots, then the A7S III heat dissipation system, which is passive and really good, should not get you into trouble. However, if you already know that you're going to enter very hot conditions, the active cooling feature of the FX3 alone has just made your decision for you. Within the menu, you can choose to turn active cooling off, run it on minimum strength, or have it automatically turn off once recording starts, which is a pretty neat option. Now to start wrapping this video up, differences in form factor. The FX3 is a couple of grams heavier than the A7S III. Its grip is bigger and noticeably deeper, but the one of the A7S III is already deep and feels very secure to hold. It's almost unnecessary to waste your breath talking about differences in form factor with these two cameras. And especially once you start rigging both these cameras, the slight differences in form factor start making no difference at all. Now, to actually start wrapping up this video, let's take a quick look at what's actually the same. As I've already told you, internally they are the same. Image quality, video modes, frame rates, the same. Both of them are supporting dual SD card slots, accepting UHS-2 V90 SD cards or CFexpress Type A cards. The displays both have the same 3 inch diagonal, the same 0.3 megapixel resolution and are both vary angle or tilt swivel displays. The menu structure is the same, both cameras use FZ100 batteries. Inputs and outputs are exactly the same, full-size HDMI, two 3.5mm connectors, one for the mic input, one for headphone monitoring, micro USB for remote triggering and USB-C for charging and power supply. So in my opinion, who should get which camera? The FX3 is the way to go for all of you which totally dig the XLR top handle. For all of you that work in extremely hot environments where overheating surely is an issue. For all of you that really can make good use of tele lights. And for all of you that just want a bigger, deeper grip. The A7S III is the camera of choice for everybody that cannot live without having an EVF. For everybody that either doesn't need an XLR top handle, will opt instead for the XLR K3M module or will record audio externally to a field recorder. For everybody who up to this point never had a problem with overheating. Okay, that's it for this video. If you liked it, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. All the tech that I've used in this video is linked in the description. As always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.